welcome to another Thursday tale. I'm here, you're here, let's get into something and let's do it with a bit of a twist. This Thursday tale is going to be brought to you by my loving family. So I'm going to switch up this background I got going on here and get into it um, because we are living in a world where there is a shift happening and everybody is perceiving it a little bit different through their own lens of perspective and so I want to hear, I want to give you a tale from three other women and let them tell you what's going on from their point of view. So without further ado, my family. So I would like to thank you ladies for joining me for this first ever group Thursday Tales. Yeah. We'll call it a Thursday, talk about it. Like tell it all ter Thursday. Tell it all Thursday. You know, we can workshop Thursday. it. Huh? Thursday. <laughs> tell it all Thursday. That's what it is. It sounds like a turkey. Who knows? Um, <laughs> so I would like to thank you. Usually I do my thing that my father likes to talk about. So if you guys, right hand, left hand, both hands. Okay. Right. All at once. One, two, three. Right hand, left hand. Wow. <laughs> nice, love it. So, <laughs> if you can start introducing yourselves from me over, take it away. Hey. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm the older sister of By Ladybug. Hi, I'm Deneen. I'm the mom of By Ladybug. Hi, I'm Deanna. I am the middle child. A by lady book. <laughs> snap a child. But she surely is my sister. Let's snap a lie, though. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Gotta have the first one that has the middle, middle one. Middle sister. There it is. <laughs> so I have uh, written up a couple of questions that I wanted to talk about. As you know, this world is shifting into a new phase. Um, quite like Marvel. Some people like it. Some people don't. But it's here, it's happening, and it's real. So, I want to get your opinions on a couple of things. Um, and let me know what you guys think. Everybody should have an opinion in what we're going through right now. Not everybody does, but everybody should. So, let's share some opinions here. Everything is opinion here, unless they label it as fact. And here's hoping that it's actual facts. <laughs> fact check. Fact check. I won't do it. No, I might. I might. So the first question I want to present to you is, um, how has this shift in society's demand for change made you feel? Anyone can start off if you like. Overwhelming. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's been feeling, I've been feeling very much overwhelmed by the occurrence of everything going from the pandemic to the revolution that obviously is being televised. It's just been a lot. Um, so overwhelming is how I've been feeling. Yeah, definitely think that too. Like, it was a shock. First feeling was shock, first and then sadness. I'm not saying this is the exact order because then it goes back and forth. But there's so shock and there's sadness, there's frustration, there's anger, and there's just like yeah. once you feel all that, then you're just like, oh my gosh, all these emotions. Who knew I had them all? But yeah, yeah. my first one was anger. Yeah. Okay. Um, like. So you have a lot of different people in their thought process, right? Like our age group, millennials, Gen Z, I feel like we're the ones that are more enraged um, and angry, like this, like anger. Um, and people in the older generations, not everybody, but from what I've seen and experienced, you know, this is just, this life, this has happened, you know, and being angered not only by what we're seeing out in the streets because we get angry every time we get upset every time we we mourn every time um but because we can't turn away from what we're seeing um it's just like like somebody just holding your eyelids open to what's happening in society and i'm not only angered by that but just how other people are interpreting what's happening in society right now yeah. um and either them not understanding them not being angry enough in my opinion um you know it's been a lot uh, it's stressful yeah i agree i think it's been a slow burn for me because mm -hmm. i'm in that generation i am in a millennial but i was i'm an old millennial i said but um, old or classic <laughs> classic <laughs> millennial just, yeah um <laughs> just because i feel like it's been like a slow burn at first it was like here we go again happens every time but then as you see the uproar in the community about it then I think it the next thing it was it was um, driving me and inspiring me 
to get more educated. So now I'm looking up things and I'm finding out things that I thought I knew or knew information about things like, you know, I think we all know systematic racism because it's a, it's a tag word, but what does that mean? So understanding, yeah, uh, what was set up and where the history of police came from and how, because we haven't made those changes, it's is the reason why we're here today so now it's like now i'm like super angry <laughs> like you know I, or i wasn't as angry i'm more angry than i was before I and mean, i won't say super angry just because like diana said the way other people are reacting i'm like wait are you looking at the same thing i am yeah um, but to a certain extent like i feel like there's shock involved because like diana said we're you know you get angry because this happens all uh, all the time and you get angry every time but I think the shock came in when everybody got angry. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. oh, snap. So this isn't just a hit to the community like usual. We just, you know, for lack of a better word, internalized it because we created Black Lives Matter a while ago and people didn't like it. You know, we liked it because it spoke to our community, but people didn't like it. So it felt like this happened over again. It was like, all right, well, we're internalizing into the community again. This is what it is. You know, we shared about it. We we felt outraged about it. But then everybody felt outraged about it. We was like, oh, snap. It's like, um, when you said slow burn, it makes me think of like a, a lighter that's running out of fuel or whatever. Yeah. You just like, Shh, and it spark, you, you know, it sparks and then it goes away. And then it sparks and it goes away. And yeah. it sparks and it goes away. And then, like, I feel like this time, like, the flame stayed on. Yeah, and exactly. like, flew everybody yeah. is just like awakened by it. Because yeah. that's what I think, too. Oh, oh sorry, Mom. What I was going to say is I think that one of the reasons why we've had that opportunity for that slow burn or everybody has been on the, has gotten angry because this is the first time when everybody's home, right? Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with the pandemic. So we're, this is the first time that the entire country and the world is at a slower pace. Mm -hmm. So now what we're experiencing is it's the same thing that's happened. We've been here before, you know, with unjustified killings, but we mourn it. But because we've been busy, we just go, 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 go. Right. We're like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, we feel bad about that. But we keep moving. Yeah. We're not moving at that pace right now. So now it's like everybody is focusing on this and everybody is tapping in. most people. Yeah. Are tapping. Yeah, because we can't say we because there are plenty of people who don't agree or who oppose what's going on right now, whether they understand it fully or welcome understanding it fully. But I think there's something to taking it slow and on top of that I think um, when you were like it was like people for it and people against it but there was another category of people and those are the people who are fighting those were the people who were indifferent right they they in that they maybe said oh yeah they matter cool but you know they went about their life because they were going busy da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and now though that group of indifference people are noticing okay I can't be indifferent. Right. I'm either racist or I'm anti-racist. So I think being able to stay home and really nothing else you could do was look at the TV and see what was happening and they were playing it over and over again and then people, Black Lives Matter I think was able to capitalize on their um, education and people who have been working in that field and so now they're putting out education so now because I don't have nothing else to do I can scroll through my phone I can research I can look and see well what do they really mean what are they talking about it and so they're educating themselves yeah. and realizing I can't be diff different anymore so now because the people who were mad before there might be some who are educated in turn but most of them are probably still mad now the difference is those indifferent people those people who were just like I'm living my life yeah everybody's cool now they're like wait a minute no I need to be upset too yeah Speaking of learning and education, I feel like a lot of people are putting more power in that as well. I want to ask, uh, what new information have you learned in this second wave of Black Lives Matter movement? So yes, that's one thing that um, is sticking to me uh, for things that I'm learning um, about, uh, I believe it's called Seneca Village, as Deanna was helping me because I can't find my text message from my father. Um, but it was something that I learned on TikTok from this wonderful person who was dancing while giving this information because you know you got to play around with the TikTok algorithm and the attention span of people watching TikTok. Um, but it's essentially the city and town that um, people of color, mainly black people, created in New York um, that also welcomed in um, the the Irish people that have come into America and they created this nice thriving city um, and 
people who opposed people of color having anything, honestly, that's what it was, um, they burnt it down. And they, they bought it, they burnt it down. I don't know if they burnt it down first or bought it first. But then they turned it to Central Park. And the fact that Central Park is such an iconic thing, we all know that as the park that was across from the coffee shop in which the Friends resided in. Um, they didn't talk about that on Friends. Um, <laughs> but that that's something that we all know about. And everyone, you know, when you think about New York, one of those things is Central Park. But no one talks about that history. And... It's, uh, we're all learning that our public system kind of failed us in a sense that, you know, the victor gets the right history and they're, they're ramping it and we're not being taught the true underlining parts of what made our history so great or so bloodstained. So it's, I feel like everybody's catching up on that learning curve.